Hey everybody, Rich here with another retro video. This one is kind of special. I had done a search on the YouTube website for retro Linux, that term specifically, to see if anyone had done videos on what's now considered to be retro Linux distribution operating systems. I couldn't find any. That was actually kind of interesting, so this may be the first retro Linux video on YouTube. I doubt it, but it might be, because uh, per my searching, I couldn't find any, so this could be the first. Could be. A little bit of bragging rights, maybe. Well, anyway, let's get into this. As you can tell by this big-ass logo over here, I am using Red Hat. But what version of Red Hat? Well, I'll show you. I have this bookmarked here from a previous session. Okay, Red Hat Linux, the last version of the desktop that they uh, released was version 9, and this is uh, Shrike, which was March 31, 2003. Now, it's not exactly retro, but in the Linux world, close. given how fast things change, close enough. And you got to admit, for a 2003 release, this looks really good. But I have to tip my hat, you know, <laughs> pun intended, I guess, to Red Hat because they put a lot of effort to make this thing look good. This looks so much better than pretty much everything else that was out in 2003 at the time. Um, you have to remember, this was before Windows Vista. The, as a matter of fact, Windows XP was only two years old. Two years old at the time this was released, because XP came out in 01, and this is an 03 release of Red Hat, before they went to Red Hat Enterprise Linux, which is what it is now. Uh, this is before anyone knew even what Ubuntu was. They knew what Red Hat was. This used to be like top dog. Everyone knew Red Hat, right? Um, but then Ubuntu came in and with Canonical and just started taking over everything. And they, Well, Red Hat withdrew from the personal market and they got into all that corporate stuff which is why there's Red Hat Enterprise Server and Enterprise Linux, whatever. And then Ubuntu stepped in and took charge. But before that, it was basically Red Hat and um, I would say Seuss. Seuss and Red Hat. I mean, yeah, there was always Slackware. That's all. Slack, Slackware and Debian have been there forever, right? But the the name Red Hat that was you would see this for sale like in a Borders bookstore or Barnes and Noble Noble when you actually went to buy Linux because it was I mean this was three CDs this was not a small distribution Shrike was three discs and uh, so you actually had to go buy it and you probably spent I mean I bought it not this version I bought version six which was like years ago and that one. I remember paying about $35 for that box. That was the only way you could get it. You couldn't download it. Everyone was still on dial-up. <laughs> right? So, um, well, version 6, you got to remember, was like late 90s, very early 2000s, and that everyone was still on dial-up back then. Anyway, back to the OS here. Okay, so what we got is, uh, on the internet side, there is some apps you're probably familiar with. There's GFTP, uh, XChat, uh, the Mozilla browser, which you see right now, Mozilla Mail, and um, Pan, which was, Pan was actually used for <laughs> Usenet news group reading. I'm not going to get into it, but because uh, if you've seen one news group reader, you've seen them all. For those of you that even know what they are, right? When you go into places like uh, settings or whatever, like uh, let me go to the system, set the display manager. I mean, it, it looks like anything else. It's when you get into... I mean, you got to remember, this is... What is this kernel is this? This is a 2.4 kernel. And distributions back in the two point, in the early 2000s, these were, were ridiculously difficult to configure. You had to do a lot of stuff from the prompt. I mean, I make it look easy now because I got the whole thing configured and it looks nice and it's running and everything. But believe me, if you actually had to do this from scratch... Ooh, Linux is uh, easy today compared to how difficult Red Hat 9 was. So, anyway, a few more apps. There are, uh, it does have OpenOffice in it. OpenOffice 1. <laughs> Get rid of this. Let me show that again real quick. 
Open Office one dot yeah one dot o dot two. That is crazy old. I mean it works great, but that's still freaking old, man. And here's something which is actually quite nice. Uh, now the the help section is actually not too bad. It's uh, GNOME help. Granted, and by the way, this is GNOME. This is not KDE. Um, but when you read this, it's actually uh, pretty helpful. <laughs> you know, and you have to remember, again, this is like a, a tribute to the GNOME team and Red Hat and putting something together with nice, detailed documentation. Other distros just simply did not have it like this, or not, not in the way that Red Hat put it together anyway. So other than that, um, I the only I, I mean yeah it had actually had quite a lot of games. Now this was funny. You got your mahjong, you've got like four types of card games, uh, knots, Gnotsky, whatever that I don't even know what that is. Maybe it's a snakes game or something. Like, I I don't know. Even had a little version of Minesweeper, <laughs> Gnome Mines. You know, because they were trying to make it you know, look like a, a business-style Windows type of thing, so they put in stuff that people would play in the office. For the sound and video, you've got... What is this? G-Rip or G-Rip? Oh, CD Player Ripper. Yeah, I remember when people used to rip CDs. Well, yeah, that was a big deal in early 2000s. And it uh, even has Sound Recorder, which looks you gotta remember a lot of this stuff was meant to look similar to Windows on purpose so the migration would supposedly be easier assuming you could even install and get it this far <laughs> well anyway other than that you've still got your same stock stuff you have still got your your regular home folder and yes I am logged in as root and I know that's dumb you should never log in as root you should always log in as a uh, as a user but the thing is, though, early Red Hat, um, I could never get around with it without doing stuff in root because it just everything just took too long, especially this. And by the way, if you're thinking of running this, I would not recommend it. And the reason I don't recommend it is because, first of all, it takes very long time to boot. Um, a lot of Linux users tend to forget how fast Linux boots today compared to how it did seven years ago. This literally will take three times as long to boot compared to say like a modern distribution of Ubuntu or Fedora or uh, whatever flavor of Slackware, doesn't matter what you use, that will boot a lot faster than this will. The uh, that, that old kernel, you don't, believe me, you don't want to mess with it. I'm just showing it to you just because it's kind of a fun thing, but I'm not saying you should get it and try it. But if you want to, I'll tell you how. Now fortunately, pay attention to this address up here. Uh, Red Hat does provide every single distribution of their desktop that they had before they went to the corporate side to uh, Enterprise Linux, uh, Red Hat Enterprise Desktop and Server. You can go all the way back to the Mother's Day release, that's what they call it, version 1. If you want something with an ISO, uh, a bootable CD in other words you have that starts at version 6.2 so if you go to 6.2 and then pick a language and then ISO and then I386 and there they are there are the ISOs and that uh, one is called Zoot they'd have names for each one um, like this one is called Shrike it, it follows a, a bunch of distributions did that you know and uh, Zoot is right here they actually had one called Cartman which I think is kind of funny um, and then they, you know, Enigma, Valhalla, Psyche, or Psyche, Shrike, last one, whatever. Um, the only ones that were not named um, were version 2.0 and 2.1, but all the other ones had names. So anyway, back over here. Anywhere from 6.2 all the way to 9. Now, if you want to make a version, a run version 1 for whatever reason, uh, it is here. But you'd have to, you know, make your own bootable disk. It's still here is uh, code you can put together. But all the, uh, like for example, here's root disks right here, and there's the uh, root disk image, and there's the kernels. So if you know what you're doing, you can put it together. And yeah, I mean, check out the dates on this. 1996. <laughs> it's it's old.
So anyway, there you go. If you want to run a retro Linux, not that you should, but you could, you can go to our, uh, FTP slash slash archive download Red Hat com pub Red Hat Linux, and they are all there. Other distributions I'm not so certain about, although if you wanted to run, say, like a retro Debian or something like that, I suppose you could. I suppose it's got to be somewhere. Red Hat's just the one I know. So anyway, there you go, guys. Red Hat 9, quite possibly the first retro Linux video on YouTube.